And what's going on, Fontaine here, VIPSoundLab.com, and we're back answering questions. Not going to run too long in this video, just answering your member question, how to get your sound card set up, advanced users. This is something you probably wouldn't be interested in, but for someone who's new, you know, to the world of audio recording, this could be a very helpful video uh, to make things, you know, run a lot more smoother for you. So let's go ahead and jump in machine. I'm going to jump under machine two preferences. Here's your uh, preference menu where you can find all the good stuff in machine such as your audio MIDI, your libraries, plugins, hardware, things that the, of that nature. Uh, we're gonna jump on the audio, here's your interface, here's your uh, your routings, your inputs, your outputs, drivers, device status, sample rate, buffer size, latency, which nine times 10 is gonna be what most producers are gonna be interested in because you know we all hate latency. All right, so on the core audio, I'm using the Scarlett 616, but you know your sound card would uh, appear here, whether internal or external. So I'm not really sure what you have, but you'll find it there. And your buffer size, I would say probably start just like 512 and if you get more clicks and pops, uh, bring it up maybe to like um, maybe like 1024. The machine is not a full DAW right now and Native Instruments is more or less, you know, the beta testers and stuff like that. They're more or less focusing on getting the audio tracks out with the next update, which I think would be pretty dope. So when they do add the little uh, audio icon here, I hope that they add some type of warping uh, algorithm or something along those lines. Otherwise, I think it's going to be pretty boring, you know, but I don't want to get too far off subject. And then the time stretching and the real time stretching and real time pitch shift, of course, I know that's going to be coming after that, but I, I, I would imagine they're going to do the audio tracks before they even do the time stretching. So it's going to be a long wait. So psh, prepare for that. Maybe they might shock us and drop them both at the same time. That would be cool. So then that way we can get, you know, caught up with a lot of things in the machine. But again, I'm not going to get too off subject. So let's uh, continue on with the video. Okay. Um. Yeah, you you adjust that there. Uh, I'm using input latency of 3.6 right now. I think my sound card. I think I can get it down to like 2.2, maybe 2.4, if I really push it. You know. But again, you know, it depends. You know, because a lot of times you get in those bigger sessions, man, you can get those clicks and pops, and you know things can go a little crazy. But that's how you fix that. All right. So under your routings, here's your input, your output. This is a six input uh, sound card. So here's my inputs and I have the two spit ups, which, you know, you can use for inputs or outputs. Most producers, I mean, spit up. Some people use it. Some people don't. I, it, it can be very useful. I mean, to be honest, I mean, hey, we're all about inputs and outputs, right? You know, connecting your, your NPCs, your MIDI controllers and, you know, all that good stuff. And your outputs can be found here and it's where you can select your outputs. Again, this is only a six. Uh, input and output sound card so you know if you got one with 16 32 outputs whatever the case may be machine can give you up to 16 so you have 16 left and rights and your inputs i believe those would show here too uh, i believe on mine the inputs are limited because probably because of my sound card i would imagine i'm pretty sure that there's more it would be more inputs here if that was under uh, a different sound card if i'm not mistaken if I am, you guys just correct me in the uh, the comments below. All right, so under the MIDI, here's where you can set up your master send clock or your slave. You can receive or send MIDI, and here's the devices here. If you you know if you got, for example, you know some type of MIDI controller or you know MPD, uh, I don't know, maybe some VIP software from Akai. You know you might have one of the Akai products. Uh, you know whatever, whatever whatever the case may be. You know. I mean, you even can have MIDI control. It could be something, you know, like um, you can go to a mom and pop store. Like, if, like, like, let's say if you don't have money for an expensive MIDI controller, you can go to a mom and pop store and have like, um, like it's like little cheap keyboards. Sometimes those will even control MIDI, believe it or not. Um, being that you have the machine uh, hardware controller, you know, you can play your instruments like that too. It's a little bit harder. But if you don't have a MIDI controller, I mean, hey, you can even connect a cheap MIDI controller from like a mom and pop store and just use the keys on it. You know, those keys are still going to work the same. OK, so you'll find that in here. For example, uh, here's the machine controller input, uh, the USB interface here, uh, machines, controls, virtual input. You can press shift and uh, control the machine. A lot of times, if, you know, just in case someone doesn't know that to control other DAWs, you know, like Logic uh because machine comes with what's called the controller editor template you can use the controller editor template to use the factory ones from native instruments or some custom ones nine times out of ten i like to make custom ones because you might want to have 
you know, certain uh, settings set up. Great, my AC is running now, so now I'm getting in the air in the mic. But anyway, uh, yeah, and right here, uh, here is the Axiom 61. Uh, that's my MIDI control that I particularly like to use when I'm recording MIDI and things like that. And your outputs will be here, and you can get all that good stuff uh, set up here. You know, if you want to tick off what you need to be ticked in there. All right, so that's pretty much it. Again, like I said, this is not a long video. Again, it's just more or less just information showing you how you can get your MIDI from external devices, sound cards, and all that good stuff set up. If you have any questions or concerns, just hit me up. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. I will see you guys in the next one.